What's going to happen to the Northern Lights when we have a magnetic pole shift? Where will they be heading? This is what a scholar tells us will happen. This is on Sputnik News. The key to figuring out whether polar lights will migrate along the wandering magnetic North Pole apparently lies in the difference between the Earth's magnetic and geomagnetic poles. This is according to a new study. As the Earth's magnetic pole appears to continue gravitating towards Siberia from Canada, faster and faster, it's about 34 miles a year lately, this development has raised a rather unusual question among some scientists. How would this sh the shift affect the phenomenon known as the aurora borealis, that is, the northern lights? As Nathan Case of Lancaster University explained in an article published on The Conversation, the northern lights occur when solar matter and energy penetrate our planet's magnetosphere and get funneled into the poles by the magnetic field and then produce such spectacular, beautiful light displays. Earlier this year, the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric, Atmospheric Administration, the uh, NOAA as we know it, and the British Geological Survey updated the location of the magnetic North Pole, calculating that the pole is leaving the Canadian Arctic, moving towards our, uh, Russia at a rate of uh, 55 kilometers a year, that's about 34 miles a year, up from just 15 kilometers in the year 2000. So it's over double that. Now, the recent study published in the Geophysical Research Letters Journal has revealed, however, that the aurora follows the, follows the geomagnetic poles rather than the magnetic poles. And the former seem to move much slower than the latter. Quote, and since the aurora seems to follow the more average version of the magnetic field, it means that the northern lights are not moving that fast either. It seems as though the aurora are staying where they are, at least for now. That's what Case remarked. And the Earth's magnetic north pole is shifting rapidly. So what will happen to the northern lights? This is what the conversation is telling us. This is by Nathan Case, Senior Research Associate in Space and Planet Physics, Lancaster University. Today's article. Like most planets in our solar system, the Earth has its own magnetic field, and thanks to its largely molten iron core, our planet is in fact a bit like a bar magnet. It has a north and south magnetic pole, separate from the geographic poles with a field connecting the two. This field protects our planet from radiation and is responsible for creating the northern and southern light spectacular events that are only visible near the magnetic poles. However, with reports that the magnetic North Pole has started moving swiftly at 50 kilometers a year, that's about 34 miles a year, and may soon be over Siberia, it has long been unclear whether the Northern Lights will move as well. And now a new study published by Geophysical Re Research Letters has come up with an answer to that. Our planetary magnetic field has many advantages. For over 2,000 years, travelers have been able to use it to navigate across the globe. Some animals even seem to be able to find their way thanks to the magnetic field, but more importantly than that, our geomagnetic field helps protect all life on Earth. Earth's magnetic field extends hundreds of thousands of kilometers out from the center of our planet, stretching right out into interplanetary space, forming what scientists call a magnetosphere. This magnetosphere helps to deflect solar radiation and cosmic rays, preventing the destruction of our atmosphere. And this protective magnetic bubble is not perfect, though, and some solar matter and energy can transfer into our magnetosphere. As it's then funneled into the poles by the field, it results in the spectacular display of the northern lights. Now, what about this wandering pole of ours? Since Earth's magnetic field is created by its moving molten iron core, its poles are not stationary, and they wander independently of one another. In fact, since its first formal discovery in 1831, the North Magnetic Pole has traveled over 2,000 kilometers from the Boothian Peninsula in the far north of Canada to high in the Arctic Sea. 2,000. Now, this wandering has generally been quite slow, around 9 kilometers a year, 
allowing scientists to easily keep track of its position. But since the turn of the century, this speed has increased to 50 kilometers a year, that's 34 miles a year. The south magnetic pole is also moving, though at a much slower rate, at about 10 to 15 kilometers a year. This rapid wandering of the north magnetic pole has caused some problems for scientists and navigators alike. Computer models of where the North Magnetic Pole might be in the future have become seriously outdated, making, it, making accurate compass-based navigation difficult. Although GPS does work, it can sometimes be unreliable in the polar regions. In fact, the pole is moving so quickly that scientists responsible for mapping the Earth's magnetic field were recently forced to update their model much earlier than expected. Now, does this, this mean that the aurora will move, the northern lights? The aurora generally form in an oval about the magnetic poles, and so if the poles move, it stands to reason that the aurora might too, with predictions suggesting that the North Pole will soon be approaching northern Siberia. What effect might that have on the aurora? The northern lights are currently mostly visible from northern Europe, Canada and the northern U.S. If, however, they shifted north across the geographic pole, following the north magnetic pole, then that could well change. Instead, the northern lights would become more visible from Siberia and northern Russia, and less visible from much more densely populated U.S.-Canadian border. Fortunately for those aurora hunters in the northern hemisphere, it seems as though this might not actually be the case, a recent study made a computer model of the aurora and the Earth's magnetic poles based on data dating back to 1965. It showed that rather than following the magnetic poles, the aurora follows the geomagnetic poles instead. There's only a small difference between these two types of poles, but it's an important one. The magnetic poles are the points on the Earth's surface where a compass needle points downwards or upwards vertically. They are not necessarily connected in drawing a line between these points through the Earth would not necessarily cross its center. Therefore, to make better models over time, scientists assume that the Earth is like a bar magnet at its center, creating poles that are exactly opposite each other, antipodal, that is. This means that if we draw a line between these points, the line would cross directly through the Earth's center, and at the points where that line crosses the Earth's surface, we have the geomagnetic poles. The geomagnetic poles are kind of a reliable average dot version of the magnetic poles, which move erratically all the time. And because of that, it turns out they are not moving anywhere near as fast as the magnetic north pole is. And since the aurora seems to follow the more average version of the magnetic field, it means that the northern lights are not moving that fast either. It seems as though the aurora are staying where they are, at least for now. We already know that the magnetic poles move, but poles have wandered ever since the Earth existed. In fact, the poles even flip over, with north becoming south, and south becoming north. These magnetic reversals have occurred throughout history every 450,000 years or so, on average. The last reversal occurred 780,000 years ago, meaning we could be due a reversal soon. We could be due a reversal soon, they said. So rest assured that a wandering pole, even a fast one, should not cause too many problems, except for those scientists whose job it is to model it. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue 
my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.